going on guys? Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I'm coming at you with an updated Marincess deck profile for the new ban list which came out yesterday at the time of recording this video. Recently my upload schedule has been a little bit slower than normal so I'm just now starting to get these updated decks post ban list on my channel. I should have quite a few decks updated in the coming weeks so definitely stay tuned for that. Talking more about Marincess, I think this deck got a lot better post ban list simply because the other big cyburst deck in the format, Math Mech, got a little bit worse. I think Math Mech is still a completely fine deck, but of course not only did it get hindered, but it's weak to things like Bistules and Bell, which are super popular right now. And Marincess, honestly, this format with all the, like, which tech cards seem popular, Marincess is good against almost every single tech card in the format. Like, it just blows through low impacts. It doesn't care about a lot of board breakers, except for Kaiju. So as long as you can, like, deal with Kaijus or, like, play around them or know that that is what sort of gives Marincess trouble, this deck really doesn't lose to almost anything, and it's extremely powerful. Before we hop into it, I do want to let you guys know Discord link down below, along with my other social media links. Also, I'm trying to hit 15,000 subscribers, so if you do enjoy this Yu-Gi-Oh! content and you like what you see here, feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out and what I do here on the channel. And without further ado, let's hop into this Marincess deck profile. So, of course, we're going to start off with the deck's engine and get the engine through first before we get on to the tech cards and defensive cards. So, starting off, we have three Marincess Blue Tang, obviously the best starter for the deck. Uh, Blue Tang is definitely the one you want to open up with the most because she does so much. Obviously, she gets you a send from deck, which can be any Marincess monster you need. And then also when she is linked for a water monster, she gets you potentially an additional resource, which is very good. She's a one card starter that sometimes can play around hand traps by herself, which is very, very good. And opening Blue Tang is just like your strongest opening play. Next, I am still on three Marincess Spring Girl. Like a lot of the engine isn't really changing because like the engine is pretty solid. It doesn't really need to change for the ban list and three spring girl this is your like one true marincess extender that can play through like book of moon on a normal summon if you summon blue tang right like cyber stacks always struggle with like their normal summon except for math mech circular uh and spring girl is like the best extender for marincess because it plays around any like destruction on your normal summon then i'm on three pascalist which some people like to play two of this card i've even seen some lists on less than two uh, I've always liked three because it's another way to just play past cards like Book of Moon, for example. Again, Cyber's decks are very often weak on their normal summon. Pascalus is just an additional extender that can help you play through a lot more. Pascalus also provides another layer to the deck by being level four, which allows you to make rank four plays if you choose to do so. Personally, I run Stealth Kragen, so I'm often making that with Pascalus. Uh, she's just an additional extender that can help you play through interruptions and just make your end board even better. Three, Marincess Seahorse. This also isn't going to change. This is a card that is not only a solid extender if something happens to your blue slug, like if it gets veilered or impermed and you have Seahorse, you can just keep going. So she plays the role of an extender in that way. And then she's also just like your second best one card starter, maybe your third. Uh, like Blue Tang, Spring Girl, and Seahorse are like your real one card starters that can get you almost anywhere. Uh, the other Marincess monsters are still combo to get you to wave, which is really all you need. Uh, but they are less good than opening up something like Seahorse, Spring Girl, or Blue Tang. Next up, we have two Marincess Mandarin. Mandarin is another Marincess that is very good because even though she isn't like full combo by herself, she's one of the only Marincess monsters that can actually just generate a free body. Every other Marincess monster you put on the board essentially like takes a resource like Spring Girl and Seahorse, you know, you're using a card from your hand, but Mandarin can just generate a body from Grave, which is really good, especially when you're making big pushes or especially going second, trying to go into some Zelantis lines. Uh, and I'm playing two Mandarin because I'm not on Synet Mining, which I haven't been for like my last couple lists, uh, because Synet Mining is like not the best card in Marincess. It really stinks to lose a card and then getting ashed on that. Hurts really bad when your deck normally doesn't lose to Ash. So we're running two Mandarin, so we still have a good amount of starters. One Basilolima, I still really like playing this card. And I think, especially with the way the format's looking, with Runic being a solid option and having a lot of cards that Basilolima can help you with, like Flashing Fire, uh, and also like Evil Twin Sprite looks good. There's a lot of destruction in the format, like Sword Soul Blackout potentially even. Uh, Basil and Lima is particularly good versus those decks, but it also can come up versus different things like Lightning Storm, of course. Like, her protection effect is very good. No other Marincess monster can really provide you, like, that sort of benefit. So there are some game states where being able to send Basil and Lima off Blue Tang is very nice. And then also, of course, she is just a Marincess monster, so she is a combo. Uh, and I just really like having her resource in deck. On to Marincess Spells and Traps, I am, of course, on the... One Battle Ocean and the two Marincess Dive. 
this doesn't really change for me too often. I think this ratio is pretty sound. I have seen more people play 3 dive recently, uh, and I think 3 dive is pretty okay when we were in a droll format, and I think it's like fine enough now. But I still have hands even where this card's at 2 where I draw it with no more incest monster and it's just really bad because it's doing nothing. It's not like a starter and an extender like you would prefer cards to be. It's more like a theosis where if you don't see playable, it's not doing anything for you. Uh, so I really don't want to maximize on dive and I like to use the other spot for additional tech cards. Um, but dive is a very important card. So you do want to play at least two of it, especially if one gets like runic vanished, for example, or dia, uh, not diablosis, rise heart vanished. And yeah, and once you see one, you will never need to have another unless something happens to it. So it's another reason not to play too many dive. Then I am testing something I told myself I would never do, but because I'm playing certain cards in the list, it kind of makes sense. I'm on two Marincest Wave. Now, if you've been watching this channel for quite some time or you follow my Marincest content, you'll know that I'm personally a fan of one wave. I think it's just like the most optimal so that I'm not drawing it going second. I'm not drawing too many of it with like unplayable. It's really weak into Kaiju. So if you get Kaiju and you have like extra wave, it's just more dead cards in your hand, which I don't like. However, I tested it a little bit at two when we were in a droll format where this card really made sense because you wanted to like sort of luck sack into it more often because if you get drolled, the only way you're getting this card is through your blue tang or like milling it off spring girl and adding it off anemone, right? So I wanted to just play more of this card to counter droll, but I recently added, uh, like just to spoil it, I guess, I recently added thrust to my list. So playing an additional wave makes sense there. I'm on desires, so like you don't want to banish one wave, even though it's not like the biggest deal in the world, it definitely makes your engine a lot weaker. Uh, and of course, Runic's popular, Cash is still popular, so I think two wave right now I'm fine playing even though I'm not the biggest fan of it because it's just like, if you don't have playable or you're going second, this card is almost always just dead. Uh, however, I do think it's very nice to have two right now with the way the format is working and the way I've constructed this list with Thrust and Desires where I think two of this card makes a lot of sense and I don't think three is necessarily wrong. It's just not something I want to do. I like constructing my decks in a way where most of my cards are live, especially going second and Wave just doesn't fit the mold for me, um, but I do like two right now, so I am testing two. Now on to tech cards and defensive cards and hand traps, you know, the real bulk of what Marincess is trying to do, which is be like a one card starter deck with just like 20 good cards in the deck to go with it. Uh, starting off, I am on two Pot of Desires. This card is bonkers. I definitely more than likely play three if it was at three. I don't know why this card's still at two, but this card is just insane because you really don't care about what you banish. And this can, especially since you're not running Synet Mining and you're running like 15 playable Marincess monsters, 15 is a lot of one card starters, but there are times where you don't see them. Desires can sort of bridge the gap and almost give you 17 starters because the chance to see a Marincess monster off Desires if you didn't open one is incredibly high. And of course this can find go second cards and Thrust can search it as well. So this card is phenomenal. Next for the very small sort of Thrust package, I'm playing the one Thrust. Uh, this card is very solid. I'm playing the one Talents. Uh, this functions as like a really good go second option, like, if I just cared about only going first, Tactics would be better. But Tactics in this deck can be a little weird sometimes because you get waterlocked. It means quite oftentimes, you know, like in other decks, you would just make a Zeus, obviously. Uh, but in this deck, sometimes when you take a monster, you don't always have the best thing to do with it. So Tactics as a go second card sometimes isn't always the best. So I am just playing one. And in my mind, like playing one and one is a lot better than playing like two talents because obviously you have some versatility, especially, uh, like, especially if you open both of them. Uh, and I really wanted Thrust in the deck for another reason, which I'll get to in a bit, which is the Monster Reborn. Uh, this also works with the Thrust. This is one of your best ways to play around Nibiru, which is like not so in the format. It's not like a super popular card. I think it's still out there, but I don't think it's like really, really popular or anything. But if you already get nibbed, having Thrust or Reborn just essentially negates nib completely uh, because Thrust will be Monster Reborn. So that's very good. And I really like Reborn in this deck for that reason. Uh, and then I'm also playing a Feather Duster, which is something I'm maining in some of my decks this format because I think it just seems good. Like Feather Duster in the main deck is weird because it's not good going first and second, but I'm playing Thrust, so that makes it a little better already. And then also, so many decks this format kind of get thrashed by Duster in my opinion. Like it's really good versus Cash Tira, it's pretty good versus Sprite if you get like Double Cross, uh, Smashers, you know, they're setting Imperm, setting Book of Moons. 
So Duster is like pretty good versus Sprite, or at least Bates of Carrot Negate. It's really good versus Labyrinth, like both, ver both versions of Labyrinth is pretty good. Um, it's solid versus like just quite a few decks this format, and those are just the ones off the top of my head. Uh, it does have some bad matchups, but you know, it's just a one of thrust target that I think is really good, especially with Book of Moon in the format, which just gives this deck a hard time. Um, so yeah, I think Duster is pretty good. Three, Book of Moon. This card is great. Obviously, like, Kashtira is still a threat this format, and Book of Moon is just like a solid go second card into a lot of decks. But the best thing about Book of Moon is obviously the fact that it's good going first and second. Also, when I'm playing Desires, I like to be able to, like, draw certain Ghost Second cards off Desires if I need to. So things like Book of Moon and, like, Thrust and Talents are very optimal cards for what I'm looking for. And so, yeah, I really enjoy playing Book of Moon in this deck. It's just so good going first and second. And then for Hand Traps, I am on 3 Ash Blossom. I think this is very standard, very popular right now because Branded and Labyrinth are very popular decks. Ash just shuts down both of those. Uh, and it's just overall a solid Hand Trap in this format. Then, uh, for the rest of the Ghost Girls, I'm on two Ghost Ogre. I don't know if this is the best card to play in this slot. You can definitely test other hand traps or defensive cards in this slot, but I do think Ghost Ogre is fine. Hitting Birth or Rise Heart versus Kashtira, I think, just feels a little better now. Uh, and then also, it's good versus Sprite, which is going to be a popular deck, versus Runic Variants that, like, don't, or that need to put a monster in the EMZ that can't protect Fountain with Hugin. Ogre's very good there. Uh, Ogre has some bad matchups too, which is why I don't know if it's the best card. Maybe it should be Mourner, maybe it should be Bell. But right now I'm on two Ghost Ogre. Then I'm on three Effect Veiler because I felt like this was the next best, like, generic hand trap uh, after Ash and, of course, Imperm. Um, so I'm on three Effect Veiler and then the aforementioned Imperm that I'm playing three of. Uh, yeah, I think Ash, Imperm, Veiler are like the go to's right now. I think you can also still play Nib. I just haven't decided if it's good this format or not. It's looking kind of weird because Sprite's back, of course, and like Kashtira are more often going for a Rise Heart Pass. Um, but I think because of that, some Kashtira players are going for like Arsenal Falcon stuff or Shangri Era plays that play into Nib because they think it's out of the format. So I really don't know the fate of Nib. I have decided not to play it in this list, but that could easily change. So I guess that's one thing to look out for. Uh, that is it for the 40 card main deck. On to the extra deck, which I'll go over relatively quickly because it's a Marincis extra deck. It's pretty standard overall. I'm on two Blue Slug. Uh, especially with Diablosis out of the meta, you really don't have to play too many of this card, so I don't think you need to play three of this anymore, unless you just have extra deck slots uh, that are sort of free. Two Sea Angel, I enjoy playing two of this just in case something happens to the first one. The second one definitely comes up. Uh, two Coral Anemone that I might bump up to three, and I'll explain what card I would take out for the third one. I just actually don't have a third one, and I'm testing another card over the slot, but there's a reason I'm sort of trying to test three Anemone, and it's to try to play around Kaijus with certain hands. Um, and sometimes I'll end up making two Anemone turn one. It's just something I'm testing around with, so maybe playing three of this is fine. Uh, then we have one Coral Triangle and one Marbled Rock. Marbled Rock, definitely my favorite Marincess monster in the extra deck. Because every time she comes up, she's just, like, super clutch. Uh, she's, like, anytime you need your engine reset, she's there. Anytime you get nibbed and can play around it, she's there. Like, the times where she comes up are the moments where you really need to be, like, saved. So Marbled Rock is just, like, one of my favorite links because she, she makes me feel safe. Then Link 4s, I'm on the 1 Argonaut and the 1 Bubble Reef. Again, this is very standard. Um, you use, like If you don't have Field Spell, you're not really going for this, and you usually go for this one. But especially Game 2 and 3, I try to go Argonaut as often as possible, because uh, she actually provides you an interrupt. But if you draw like a lot of flex spots, then going Bubble Reef is completely fine too. Then I'm on 2 Zelantis, because this card is one of the best cards in the deck. It's good at going second. Uh, which is something nice to say for Marincess because it always had that trouble before Zelantis. Uh, also, it's part of the best end board in the game, which is just setting up Zelantis with any like link to or higher Marincess pointing to it and then having wave. It's just like almost near unbreakable. Uh, and Zelantis battle phase effect comes up so much. It's just a really insane card, so I want to play two of it. Uh, then one area you need to play this to play around Nib oftentimes because. You just try to get two bodies after you get Nibiru'd, and then you turn uh, a Nibiru token and a body into the area, and then area and the other body into your Marbled Rock, so area is really good for that. And there are some waters in the format, like especially if you play against something like Manadium, they have Meek, uh, Ogre for Kashtira, uh, Sprite, you know, they have Angler and Beaver, so there are waters in the format where areas effect can come up, obviously the Mirror Match. 
One, Stealth Kragen. I like this card, especially like Siding Nib. If you have Nibiru Stealth Kragen, you can just inflict a billion damage, which does come up as well. Uh, it's just a solid card for removal, but also is a time win condition. Uh, and can put your opponent in some really awkward spots, and then if you decide to play Gozen Match, you still have the Kragen Gozen Match line, which I really like. And then the card I'm testing for fun, essentially over the third Coral Anemone, so if you'd rather play that, feel free. Uh, I'm playing one Zeus, which is so weird, you would never see this in a Marincess list. Uh, I'm not saying this is like a real pick, uh, because Marincess, if you get waterlocked, obviously you're not making this, and you only run Stealth Kragen, so why is Zeus in here? Essentially, I love running Triple Tactics Talent in this deck because the card's insane, it fits Marincess's playstyle. As a one card starter deck, and you want talents for like a really strong card, but like I said, there's sometimes you take something with talents and you don't have a Zeus line and you can't do anything with it. So having talents and thrust in the deck, like it means if I get a Rise Hearted and I can take a Rise Heart, I can then make a Zeus with it, which is very good because if you get a Rise Hearted on your normal summon, obviously, well, a Rise Heart's gonna activate, you talents take, you make a Zeus, that's pretty solid. If you have any extender past that, it just gets better. Uh, obviously, if you summon this, you can't use your triangle because you would not, you, you've summoned a non-water. But yeah, this is just a funny flex spot I'm testing. Uh, I don't think this will stay in the list long, especially if I decide to go to a big tournament because it doesn't come up often. But it does make your talents better, so I guess you can keep that in mind. This is, this is, could be anything, and I recommend like a third Coral Anemone more likely than not. Or maybe a Splash Mage. And yeah, that's going to do it for this Marincess list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh... I think Marincess is really strong this format. I might take it to a couple of tournaments, but you know, this is also Nationals format, so I'm deciding between a lot of different decks to take for Nationals, and there aren't many regionals I can take this deck to uh, in the meantime, so if this doesn't end up being my Nationals deck, I don't think I'll have like a lot of time to play at this format. But I do think it's a, in a really solid position. It really only loses to Kaijus, I feel like, uh, and there are ways to play around it in certain hands, so... Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll get back to you uh, any different way you might be playing Marincess. I know some people wanted me to like cover Adularia Water Barrier Statue, but I just couldn't do that to myself because I think it's so bad. Um, if you like it, you know, that, you know, it's a version you can play. I just think it's not very good, so I'm not playing it. But uh, yeah, any comments about that, you can leave those down below as well, and I'll be sure to respond and give my thoughts on it. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.